lot of people like to have cushions in their home and it really makes a difference, all those little accessories. And also, if you're wanting to use this lovely flange cord on here, so they call it quite a few different things, flange cord, rope cord with a, a lip on it, and this is what it looks like. Um, just like that, with a little lip to sew on it. Now, a lot of people struggle to make them and make them look nice and professional. Some people choose to just do that and put it in. And as you can see, it's not a nice smooth finish. Others put a bit of fabric over it. We've used the same fabric uh, here, or even a black one. It would still show and not look so nice. However, this, zip, uh, this cushion here is made with the flange cord, and that's where the join is. So when you open the zip, it's all twisted together lovely. You can see the seam allowance is down there, that's where the actual join is. If you have a look at the video which follows this, it will show you how we have made this. Although we've used uh, an industrial sewing machine, it can be done on a domestic machine at home and you can have a lovely professional finish. Okay, so with everything I do, I like to use a two and a half centimetre or one inch seam allowance. So when I'm cutting out a cushion, I cut it five centimetres or two inches bigger in the width and also in the height. So this gives me a little bit of fabric to work with. You can do it with less, but I find that it's just easier to handle if you've got a little bit extra. Now with the zip, the zip uh, can be around about five centimetres each side in from the corner. So depending if you're getting a continuous zip, I would say get it a little larger and then cut it back. Or if you're buying a ready-made zip, Buy a heavier duty one, not just your regular one that you use um, for dressmaking because the heavier duty one is a little bit stronger. We use a number four, which is a really good strong zip for cushions. There's nothing worse than spending all your time making something and the kids jump on them or throw them around, have a pillow fight and your zip breaks and replacing a zip once the cushion's made is a bit tricky. So, um, you know, if you're wanting to buy a pre-made zip, just get it around about the same width as the cushion that you want, perhaps just a touch smaller, because um, you can always sort of fit it in and not use all of it if needed. Okay, so with the flange cord cushion, I start by unpicking the flange so that I've got a little flap, and later on we'll twist that together so that it gives a really nice look on the the cushion and uh, looks like it's a continuous rope. So start off with just like that. Always stitch with the nice side down. So that side there hasn't got a little ridge, this side here has. I start round about the centre. It's not 100% crucial that it's in the correct spot. I actually like to work with a two and a half centimetre or if you're still working in feet and inches, one inch seam allowance and just lay it on and stitch down to close to the corner. Now I always clip on my corner at about two centimetres in and another two centimetres in and then just gradually roll that around the corner so that you've got a nice curve. Don't pull it out tight like this when you go on because otherwise it'll end up with a uh, funny looking corner so just nice and loosely, place it on and go around the corner. Now this can be done at home on a domestic machine and you can just use your zipper foot and the zipper foot with the hole on the left hand side so that it gives you a nice, neat uh, finish in towards the cord.
And when you get close to where the join is, cut around about oh, three to four centimetres past where you have unpicked to. And then just unpick that back to around about a centimetre past where the other one is. So like you can see, I've unpicked that back to there and this one's unpicked back to there. And what we do is we untwist the, the cords and then twist them back together. Um, it's a little bit fiddly but once you get it right it, it's a, it gives a really nice finish so that the cord looks pretty continuous on the other side. So if you can have a look there now, you can see that that looks like that that's one cord without the join. So just carefully go over it. Then what I always do uh, is I do another tightening stitch because if you have a look at the edge, you can see some of the flange there. So by pulling out the, the each side, you can get in that little bit closer and it gives you a nice finish that you can't actually see the flange in there. see that looks like it's a continuous um, cord that as if there's no join in. Now what I've done before is I've actually overlocked the other side so this is the this is the front this is the back so on the back I've overlocked that bottom edge and I'll stitch a little bit in and I find this is the easiest way to put your zip in and it just sort of runs along the edge of your uh, piping so that you, your push it is sort of uh, reversible if you want to. So I go in around about the six centimetre mark or just over two inches on that side and reversing off and doing exactly the same on the other side. Now when I've cut these out, I've cut them exactly the same so that I know that my edge needs to meet each end and uh, so it really works. Now for the zip I use a continuous zip but you can use a zip with an end on so I've just threaded that on to there. Starting at the, the top side put the teeth part of the zip down on top of the piping Sort of just sit it in as close as you can get practically and then just stitch and reverse off in that um, in that little corner so go all the way along and do that the other side just open it out 
dive at the same end again. And if you notice that the, the long bit of my zip with the, um, the zip slide on is over the other edge, not at the beginning. So I don't have to stitch anywhere where I've already got that lump so I can get a nice smoother edge. So I've just folded it under and because I've got a two and a half centimetre seam allowance, so I've folded it under two and a half centimetres. And where I've finished my stitching, I just reverse that off a couple of times. Sometimes that uh, piping cord can be quite bulky. This one's actually quite fine and nice. So there's my seam allowance. Now when I'm stitching, I'm only stitching onto the zip tape. I'm not stitching through the seam allowance of the fabric or anything, uh, the cushion. That's all sitting nice and neatly underneath away from my work, so I'm not going to catch it. So I just keep folding that back. So you can either do what I did was peel the, um, zip, the piping cord back to uh, expose the zip, or you can actually sit it just on top like this uh, to, to get to get your edge of your zip because ideally you want to totally cover the, um, the zip. So go right up to the end where I've finished off the other, turn it around but before I finish it through I just push my little zip slide through so it's out of the way and then finish off my end. zip tape off so that uh, it's not too long. Undo your zip. There's nothing worse than you've made it all up and you're trying to get your zip out and it's all stuck inside. So I always put my piping side which is the front on the top. Make sure that all your flange is underneath. Start at the corner and just work your way around joining it together. Don't worry too much at this stage about you know if it's tight or not, because I always do another uh, roll round, tightening it up to make sure that it's nice and tight after. Where I've slipped around the corners too, you just have to be really careful that uh, they don't kick back into it. My ends, I usually fold them over so that it's nice and neat rather than opening it out and then it might impede your zip a little bit. So just fold it back and stitch through, just rounding the corner a little bit as you do it. Now I always go and do another edge on it to again tighten it up so that the back looks good as the same as the front. And it's a little bit of a um, Okay, so pull it apart with two lots of fingers, just take it easy, watch your fingers so that you don't sew it and um, you've got a nice neat finish.
if you have an overlocker and want to neaten it, I always sort of overlock mine when I'm finished. The domestic overlocker may not take that thickness, you just have to, a little bit of trial and error. If it doesn't, just overlock that edge before you start so that uh, you don't have to worry. Because I've got an industrial one, it'll just go straight through the lot. So I'll just show you that and uh, then we can turn it through and our cushion is finished. Alright, so just overlock along the zip edge and because this is actually for a customer, I will be putting a care label in it so that she knows how to wash it and take care of it. And like with your domestic, I sort of still, even though I can go over this with my machine, I just do it carefully because I don't want to knock the timing or anything like that out. When you come around the corners, don't uh, go too tight, otherwise your stitch will go over the edge. So I just go a little bit wider, spin it all in one. cushion complete. All it is is a matter of turning it through, giving it a press, popping your inner in and it's done. So I'll just show you the finished. See how it's lovely? You would never know where the join is. And all sides, back and front, with the flange cord, looks beautiful. We'd love to see your finished products, to see how you're going with things. If you'd like to, we'd love you to share it, either on a Skillshare, or tag us in on Facebook or Instagram, so that we can have a look how you're going. And if you want any more tips, please just follow us or contact us and we can uh, share more information with you.